Would you like to count us down? I would love to. Three, two, one. Brr, brr, ma, 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 ma. Warm. Really talented. Thank you. I'm so warmed up. I'm really good at counting too. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello and welcome to Outside the Search Bar, <laughs> the podcast where we try to answer questions without using Google. It's season two, episode three, and I'm Jacob Schubach, and I'll turn it over to my sister and co-host, Emily. So each week, Jacob and I are going to come prepared with questions that we do not know the answers to. We have so many questions, honestly. Like, we I do. probably have at least 100 at this point, so <laughs> get ready for more episodes. But honestly, it's a testament to how little we actually know. Yes. And of course, we would be remiss to not take a listener question. So if you ever have a tough question that you want us to answer on the podcast, feel free to send us an email to searchbarpodcast at gmail.com or follow us on social at searchbarpodcast and slide into our DMs. And as always, we're really smart and probably have answers. They may not be (laughs) correct answers, but they are answers. (laughs) Truly, truly. And we're really good at Googling, so. Yes. <laughs> so, Jacob, could you tell the listeners something interesting you searched for this week? Um, I haven't actually searched for anything super interesting, but yesterday mm-hmm. was Valentine's Day, and my boyfriend and I had oyster. No, we had scallops. And I kept Ooh. calling them oysters, as I just did. <laughs> I haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> and so we Google what the difference between an oyster and a scallop is, and it's literally just two different types of fishy thing. <laughs> yeah. Mollusk. <laughs> <laughs> they have their de- they have different types of shells. An oyster is more like like a cornucopia looking thing. Whereas a scallop is more like what covers Ariel's boobs. I don't know that I would call an oyster a cornucopia shaped shell, but yeah, it's like it's like a little it's like a little bit on this side, and then it gets bigger towards the mouth. It's like a cornucopia. I need to Google what an oyster <laughs> shell looks like right That's now because literally, it's actually fix- contractually true. <laughs> but like when you order oysters, it comes in the shell and it's like flat. Yeah, yeah that's it's, flat-ish. It's flat, but it's like rounded. I mean, yeah, but do you know what a cornucopia looks like? Okay, a flat cornucopia. A 2D oh. version of a cornucopia. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> Acceptable. All right, what is what did you Google this week? I Googled, how do you attach a ceramic sticker to a mug from the dollar store? What, what so, do you mean a ceramic story- sticker? It li- I don't know. The package just said ceramic stickers, and it had a picture of a mug, so I bought it. I got it from the dollar store, so like, there were no instructions. It just was a sticker. Impulse buy. It was just a sticker. Um, so John and I had this idea. Okay, John had this idea <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that we would do like one nice gift for Valentine's Day, and one that was like kind of a joke and frivolous. Silly goofy. <laughs> A little silly goofy, yeah. I wanted to keep some levity in her relationship. And he gave the example of like literally something from the dollar store. So I went to the dollar store and I found these ceramic stickers and they were all ridiculous, like very superficial, inspirational quotes, a unicorn that's saying life is magic. And the one I ultimately decided on was an Earth Day sticker. That was a picture of an earth that said, please love me. <laughs> so- <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it's Wait, really so is good. The, is the sticker itself, like it's ceramic material and it's like sticky on the back? It's, it's sticky on the back, but it's like a squishy sticker. Oh, okay. Kind of like plasticky, I guess. Okay. But it's meant for like to adhere to ceramics. Okay. And then I bought a mug. And I, I felt guilty, honestly. I was like, I'm buying two items from the dollar store. Like, I am not following the directions right now. But, like, I can't just give them a sticker, you know? Like, that's lame. You could. So, we exchanged presents on Valentine's Day. And I he actually, he went first. And he tricked me. He was like, this was a whole facade. I wanted to give you a really, really awesome gift. And he got me, like, this nice, like, charger stand thing that will hold like my phone and my airpods and like you can also like use it to like watch tv and it was expensive and nice and something i really wanted 
And then I had to awkwardly after that hand him this shoddily wrapped mug and Earth Day sticker. <laughs> well, it sounds like it sounds like you're supposed to get two things, a nice thing and a goofy thing. It sounds like he just got you a, a nice thing and you just got him a goofy thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so the plan was he's planning something for this upcoming weekend. Mm. Um, it's so we, it's still a mystery. Yeah. So we decided that we'll do the nice presents on the weekend with the nice experience or whatever he's doing. And then the actual day of, we will do the goofy gifts. Mm. A teaser of what's to come. So did you learn how to put the ceramics onto, or the stickers onto the ceramics? Um, I found this, like, mommy blogger who did it, and she said she was pleasantly surprised with how well they worked. They survived a wash in the dishwasher. Oh. Um, but she was like, I don't know that I'll continue to put it in the dishwasher. Like, I don't trust it that much, but it did work. <laughs> well, congratulations. So, to that he sticker. has not done his craft yet, but I'm not going to overstep and do his craft. <laughs> <laughs> For at least two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> at least. And then after that, no promises. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So that takes us to our first segment, What's Trending, where we discuss the latest Google search trends from the week um, and give our thoughts, comments, concerns, and opinions about what people are searching for. So I pulled one trend and one trend only because it's the only trend that matters. Um, this past weekend was the Super Bowl, the Chiefs versus the Eagles, but more importantly, the Super Bowl halftime show, which was... Rihanna. Emily, what were your first thoughts, comments, and opinions on Rihanna's performance? Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. No, honestly, I really liked the halftime show. I think I loved like the little like floating level stages things. Mm -hmm. That everyone said looked like um Super Smash Bros. Yes, I did see that meme. (laughs) But I think she like performed really well. I liked the mix of songs. I find it, like, very interesting that, like, they invited her back since she hasn't, like, performed in so long. But I'm glad that this was her comeback performance. She actually just had an article released this morning, I think in British Vogue, where she said that apparently the NFL has invited her to do the halftime show every year for the past 10 years. (laughs) She's declined until this moment. That makes it so much better. <laughs> like, <laughs> it truly does. But you've seen Rihanna live, right? So Lizzie did and Pamela did. And I just found this out last week. Hmm. I was not a part of this and I didn't know. So I thought that you were. So whoops. I think it was like when I first went off to college and they like decided to have a life outside of me, which was really rude. It's really audacious. Mm-hmm. So no, I have not seen her live, but I would. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I would also see her live, but I think it'll be a bloodbath to ever try and get tickets after this. Yeah. Similar to how it was a bloodbath for Taylor Swift and Beyonce. True. So. Did you get tickets for Taylor Swift? No, I did not get tickets. Did you try? Yes. I was Mm. fighting for my life on Ticketmaster for Taylor Swift, and then I was like, I'm not even trying for Beyonce, whatever, it's fine. (laughs) Um, Who would you like to see at the next Super Bowl performance? Ooh. That's a really good question. I personally feel like they need to do Taylor Swift because she hasn't done it yet. Mm -hmm. However, I think the other contender will be Miley Cyrus because Miley Cyrus also hasn't done it yet. And like people are going crazy over flowers. That's true. I was thinking it'd be cool. I liked last year's when they had like multiple artists. Mm, Yeah, that was good. I think it'd be cool if they did a, like a Taylor Swift Bad Blood music video where they just had like all of these stars come out. <laughs> Ellie Goulding is Destructa X. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love how like none of those people ever hung out ever again. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, it's I one mean... of my like favorite pop culture moments where she's like, I have this girl squad because I love empowering women. <laughs> and she was like never seen with those women again. Yeah. Iconic. It happens. Iconic. Some friends are in your life for a reason, some only for a season, you know? (laughs) Exactly. Any final thoughts on the Super Bowl? Did you watch any of the ads or any of the football thing? No. um, I heard about the ads. The 2B1 apparently irritated everyone on the planet, which I looked it up after the fact, and I absolutely would have been irritated, so... I don't think I would have been irritated. I would have been like, huh? <laughs> oh, 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get Subi, but thank you. I've heard so many people who were like, it started a fight between me and my wife. Like, why are you sitting on the remote? <laughs> okay. People are dramatic. Like, damn. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I mean, it started a conversation, which is what an advertisement is supposed to do. That's true. Did you have any favorite commercials? No, I didn't watch it. I only watched Rihanna. <laughs> Fair. Here we are. Marketing major. Who won? The Chiefs, I believe, won okay. in a last minute field goal. Oh, drama. And congratulations to Rihanna on her second baby. Has oh, that yes. been confirmed by her or is that just like... She did. Okay, cool. It got confirmed by, I believe, Pop Crave, my favorite Twitter account. Love that. <laughs> Pop Crave is how I found out that Joe Biden won the presidency. <laughs> it's like a gossip account on Twitter and it's so funny. We love that for you. There's also Pop Base. And yesterday, Pop Base announced the first look at Lady Gaga in Joker 2 before Lady Gaga announced it herself. And I was like, who are their sources? Who is capturing this content and like finding it before Lady Gaga pushes it out? Chris Jenner. Probably. <laughs> I could see her. <laughs> Chris Jenner's behind Pop Base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do post a lot about the Kardashians where I'm just like, okay, enough. <laughs> I mean, it seems possible, honestly. And if anyone knows everything about the world, it's that woman. Yeah, she does really know a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So with that, should we get to our next segment? Speaking of knowing about a lot of things. We do know a lot about the things. (laughs) Jacob, I believe you have prepared a question for us. Yes. My question is, what is a dream? (laughs) And I specifically mean this in like when you go to sleep. And, like, you have visions of things and, like, thoughts about them and you experience things. I'm, like, curious about what that is and why we have dreams. I have a strong feeling that when we look this up, it's going to be a big, I don't know, it just kind of happens. But I feel like there's so many people who research dreams that they'll know a lot about them. Mm-hmm. and like what the synapses are and what causes them and all of that stuff because i feel like you can like learn ways to be a better better lucid dreamer mm-hmm. but i don't know yeah i don't know i think my hypothesis is that your brain is always thinking wow big brain energy <laughs> <laughs> and when you're awake you're engaging with like things you know You're Uh seeing things, you're touching things, you're hearing things, you're talking with people, you're doing stuff. So, like, most of your big brain energy is being consumed by those activities. But when you're asleep, there are no distractions. Like, it's literally just your brain being a brain. And that lets it, like, run rampant and explore all those, like, weird ideas and thoughts. Because I don't know about you, but, like, when I wake up, I can typically say, like, oh, this is why I dreamed about that. Like, it was a weird plot, but... The plot was lost. I had a dream about aliens last night, but, like, that's probably because there's all these conspiracy theories going around that, like, the balloons are all aliens, so... Well, they're not all balloons. Some of them are objects and not just balloons. Objects. Yeah. Sometimes my dreams make no sense, but I generally note them in my notes app on my phone Mm. with varying degrees of recollection. Um, oh, so I pulled up a couple to see if this sparks any ideas of what a dream is. So August 18th, 2022 at 6.30 a.m. I wrote, dream, parkour Olympian, had to jump in things, candy sugar on Emily's dresser. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> parkour. That? <laughs> parkour. Um, here, oh, this is a good one. November 15th, 2022 at 4 10 a.m. Dreamed that I was in a Mr. Beast video. I want a briefcase. Oh. I, I want a briefcase full of double A <laughs> batteries. And it was in my childhood home. There was a basketball thing, and we were each gonna take pictures in our new leather jackets. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Beast, <laughs> if you want to give me a suitcase full of double A batteries, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Yeah. I haven't been in a Mr. Beast video. I've never done parkour. So I'm like, where are these things coming from? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> One of my favorite bits to do in my relationship is to wake up from a dream and like Lie aggressively wake. No, I wake oh. up John and I tell him in excruciating detail everything that happened in the dream, regardless of what time it is. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, he's just kind of like, mm-hmm, like drifting off back to sleep. And I always, I always leave, leave a pause and then I say, so what do you think it means? <laughs> 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 regardless of how ridiculous it is it could be me winning batteries for mr beast and i just say so what do you think that means and does he respond he normally laughs and then i pressure him and he's like i don't think he means anything and then i give my synopsis <laughs> i'm gonna give you a dream journal for your birthday <laughs> Honestly, you should. do you not write them down um i like occasionally do but john john is my dream journal at this point <laughs> that's fair <laughs> let me see if i have any you can keep talking oh i do think your hypothesis makes sense that there's less distractions around yourself even of the point of just like being conscious being like a big distraction because like when you daydream i think you can like i mean i'm at least able to visualize things in my head but it's not as vivid per se as compared to like a dream. But yeah, I think the the lack of distractions and the ability to just be restful does help you dream more. But as mm. as to what it actually is, I guess I'm just gonna say a bunch of chemicals in your brain doing things. I don't know what value that adds to your existence as a human being. Like how does that help you survive fight or flight type deal? Maybe it just makes you feel good. <laughs> I, feel, I don't know that it's necessarily a survival tactic. But then why would we have dreams? It's not hurting us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hurting us. Actual biologist, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I did find a dream log. This okay. was from August 1st, um, 2021. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, eating peach cobbler. On Lap Road, front porch. That's the house we grew up in. Mm -hmm. Debating with Pamela and Lizzie how long whipped cream lasts. What do you think it means? It sounds like a precursor (laughs) to this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Don't Google how long whipped cream lasts. Just fight about it. (laughs) We need to do a bonus question this episode. How long does whipped cream last? (laughs) We'll put a pin right there and we'll circle back to whipped cream. Okay. Wow. Okay. So any final thoughts on your hypothesis about what is a dream? I think the purpose isn't really known. Mm -hmm. By anyone, including me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm Googling it. What is a dream? Okay. Clevelandclinic.org. What do dreams mean? So this is an article about dreams. We love to see it. And there's a section called What Are Dreams? Dreams themselves are a little mysterious. But according to Dr. Dreerup, D-R-E-R-U-P, Dreerup? Sure. Dreams dreams are mental imagery or activity that occur when you sleep. You dream at any stage of sleep, but your most vivid dreams typically occur in rapid eye movement or REM sleep. That's the period of sleep where your brain is highly active. Your eyes move rapidly behind your closed eyes, and you have temporary loss of muscle tone. Um, So in REM sleep, we have less autonomic stability. Our heart rate increases. We don't have the steady, calm respiration that we do during other stages of non-REM sleep. That doesn't tell me why. Well, you're in luck because the next section is called Why Do We Dream? Oh, Um, thank you. (laughs) Dreaming during the stage of REM sleep is associated with the consolidation of memories. Um, It may represent important cognitive functioning. Brain activity that occurs when we're dreaming is similar to the memory processing brain activity that we experience when we're awake. When you're experiencing more stress or anxiety, you tend to dream more too. The types of dreams can also change. The doctor says that nightmares or stressful dreams, for example, about being chased in a frightening situation, are often common when you're also stressed. That's one of the theories why we dream. Our dreams help us process and manage our emotions boring i wanted something a little bit more i would would accept that i mean we all need 
to process our emotions, Jacob. I mean, I guess that also does help you with like a fight or flight survival type deal of That's true. Back in the day, there was lots of crazy things happening. There's still crazy things happening. Fair. Do you feel like we sufficiently answered your question? Yes, but I want to know more. I want to know how I can control my dreams. I want to become all powerful in the dream world. Did I ever tell you about that time I went to a therapist? <laughs> I. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> okay. So I was looking for a therapist probably like two years ago now yeah um and i do have a tendency to lucid dream context for everyone but i was having like these nightmares that like i wasn't able to lucid dream and i was like what's up with that so i found the therapist and she was like okay like you had a first couple of sessions and i'm like i think i like her like she's a little quirky but like we get along well and i feel like we're gonna make progress and then boom in the third session you know what she says to me you know what since you can lucid dream that means you have a connection to the other worlds i have a friend who's a shaman that you really should go talk to okay i did not go to the shaman you didn't go to the shaman shaman. why would you go to the shaman because i was really struggling mentally and i needed to find someone who could (laughs) actually help me (laughs) like my priority was not going to a shaman to see what would happen i absolutely would have been like let me see what's going on (laughs) what's up over here like if it happened to me now, I feel like I probably would. Yeah. Where I was at the time, I really needed someone who could actually help me in a way that would help me individually. Yeah. <laughs> so finding yeah, therapists is hard. Happen. And that's why we're sponsored by. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are we're not, not actually. We're not. But However we should they be. Do, they do sponsor a lot of podcasts. And that was a nice segue. So... <laughs> Um, I've only had one lucid dream in my life, and I will say it was like one of the craziest experiences ever. Because obviously, like you recognize that you're dreaming, mm-hmm. but I was I like instant as like soon as I realized it, I was like I was like losing contact with <laughs> the dream mm-hmm. immediately. I was like waking up because I was like ah, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was like oh my god, what do I do? All right, so that takes us to our final segment, the listener question. However, it seems like Emily had a question in the middle of the show that we're just going to make our listener question this week. Agreed. This is very pressing. I've been holding on to this one since 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, How long does whipped cream last? In what setting? Like, do you mean like out of the out of the thing? I'm going to say I don't remember this dream directly, but if I were eating a peach cobbler, I'd probably go on it, you know? And so you mean like when the whipped cream is out of the bottle or when the whipped cream is still in the bottle and in your refrigerator? I'm going to guess in the bottle and in the refrigerator because it seems like one of those things that you have and you use and you don't pay attention to how long you've had it. It feels like you should pay attention to how long you've had it because it is yeah. a dairy product. However, it is like vacuum sealed in that little, I don't know, aerosol container thing. So I'm like, maybe it's safe. And it's like a space thing. What do you mean a space thing? <laughs> like in space, when they have food, they like freeze dry it or suck all the air out of it or something. Mm. And then they eat all like little packets every day. That's fair. Maybe. I would guess six months. Six months? Yeah. I would guess two years. Like you're saying oh. like after you open it? Yeah. Oh, after you open it? Yeah, I would guess maybe two years. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's probably got some like preservatives in it, like with the sucked up air. Like I feel like it's fine. <laughs> Do you have whipped cream in your fridge right now? No, I'm paleo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in my six week challenge, I'm paleo. Outside of that, I'm not. Okay. How long does whipping cream last once opened? Ready whip. No, not the cream. Is it Ready Whip? Yeah, Ready Whip. They spell it weird, right? R-E-D-D-I. Eatpalette.com. How Uh long does Ready Whip last after opening? Solved, 2023. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) This was very interestingly updated on December 31st, 2022. 
so a little misleading in <laughs> the title, mm. but we'll accept it. Okay. Once opened, how long? Oh, no. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> Once the can is opened, Ready Whip will last for up to two to three weeks in the refrigerator. <laughs> so I not guarantee- two years. <laughs> no. I can guarantee you that I have fed Emmy older whipped cream than that. So I am a bad adult. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> it should be used within one week of opening for the best quality. Oh, okay. Now we know that we shouldn't keep our whipped cream for two years. This says, yes, you can freeze ready whip. I don't think you can freeze ready whip. I don't think. Do you shh it out and then freeze it? <laughs> I got a big bowl of frozen ready whip. <laughs> Like putting the like air pressurized can in the freezer sounds like a horrible idea. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea to me. <laughs> oh my god, it says put the can in it. I feel like that's like a joke. Like I saw a tweet once that was like, "Hey, did you know if you microwave a ball of foil, it gets all flat and shiny and like really like smooth and it looks like a perfect sphere?" And then someone replied to it and was like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> and their <laughs> microwave has exploded. <laughs> I feel like this is false information on the internet. <laughs> and I'm not willing to try it in my freezer. Should I find another resource? Yeah, can you imagine just like you put your ready whip in the freezer and you'll see an explosion <laughs> your freezer. <laughs> okay, this is from a geekoutside.com. Mm-hmm. This also says for about two weeks, so okay, yeah. So we could solidify oh, wait, that. No, I found the answer to if you freeze it. What happens? This is from the University of Illinois Physics Department. Did oh you call no, it's, it Illinois. It's Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois. Um, yeah. So this question uh, was answered in 2014. It comes from Shelly Polos, age 55. Question, does whipped cream in a can explode upon freezer in the freezer? Great question, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> really well worded. <laughs> um, and the answer from Rebecca Holmes was, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, if you're listening to this, please come on the podcast because I think you're a perfect fit. <laughs> it says, some sealed containers will burst when frozen because liquid water expands as it turns into ice. The liquid cream in your uh, the liquid cream inside your can may expand when it freezes, but the pressurized gas that whips it, usually nitrous oxide, should mostly be unaffected. Try this: you can put the can in a big Ziploc bag in case it does leak, <laughs> freeze it, and let us know what happened. <laughs> should I follow up on the answer? Yeah, please. and be like Rebecca, you owe me a new freezer. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I kind of want to try it. Oh my god, that's messy. I like Rebecca. I'll though. put She's it in the bag, like Rebecca said. <laughs> I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna ask her to be on this podcast. Um. All right. Well, do you feel like your question has been sufficiently answered from your dream I, in 2021? I feel like you've been answered that question, but so many more questions. <laughs> really, we always have more questions, which you'll find out more next week. Uh, I mean, next next bi-weekly episode. <laughs> Just to be clear. This is an every other week Don't thing. get your hopes up. We don't have a producer. It's just us. <laughs> All right. So that was the episode. If you think we did a good job and you enjoyed that, be sure to find us on social at Search Bar Podcast. And again, my handle is I got Shubach, I-G-O-T-S-C-H-U-P-B-A-C-H across all platforms. And if you have a burning question that you need answered by us or Rebecca, feel free to email us at searchbarpodcast at gmail.com. And if you like what you hear, please leave a review. It'll make us feel better about ourselves. And maybe I can finally go to that shaman instead of a real therapist. (laughs) (laughs) Love to see it. Five stars only, please. (laughs) We have very (laughs) fragile egos. (laughs) True. (laughs) Someone did give us someone did give us like a four, because we only have like a four point nine on Spotify. I do remember that. And I was like, thanks for keeping us honest, but also it hurts. Yeah. Keep us in check. All right. Well, happy searching. Until next time. Yes. Happy searching. Until next time. Bye. Bye. 
Outside the Search Bar is a perfectly done toast podcast production.